The automatons have invaded and they're sending wave upon wave of clunkers to stop the spread of managed democracy. Let's not kid ourselves, fighting against this army can feel like a constant slog. But maybe, just maybe, you've been doing it wrong the entire time. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and here's our ultimate guide to defeating the automatons. Kicking off our list is a series of automaton trooper enemies. These are the small, mindless soldiers of this massive robot army. But don't take their small stature for granted. Troopers can overwhelm and in some cases outright kill you with a well-placed shot. The most basic variation are the raiders and marauders, which for the purposes of this video are virtually identical. They have access to a standard laser weapon and will slowly move to surround the enemy, firing consistently to keep that pressure up. Really, these enemies are meant to create pressure on the player or squad, but just a shot or two to the head will render them useless. There is also a machine gun variant of the Raider, and these do have a bit more firepower, but are altogether about as effective as the standard Automaton Raider. Raiders, MG Raiders, and Marauders get a 1 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index, which we use to determine the lethality of an enemy to the player. But wait, there's more because the Brawler is another variation of the Trooper, that wields two glowing orange swords. These enemies will pursue you relentlessly and move quicker than the standard troopers and marauders. They have the ability to put immense pressure on the player, which is the biggest threat that they pose. However, they are just as fragile as the other automatons we've talked about up until this point, and a few shots to the head will render them obsolete. Brawlers receive a 2 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. Where things start to get interesting is with the Rocket Raiders. These are trooper variants that carry a shoulder-mounted bazooka, and I'm not ashamed to admit, these bastards have knocked me out more than a handful of times. It's wickedly frustrating how accurate they are with their rockets, and if you don't focus them down quickly, it's very possible your squad mates will be picking you up in little pieces. The rocket raiders are just as fragile as the other trooper enemies, but do tend to hide themselves in the backfield, which is why keeping your head on a swivel and always prioritizing them is key to not getting blown up. Rocket Raiders are a solid 3 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. If you thought rockets were bad, wait until you hear about the Assault Raiders. These are yet another trooper variant, but this time they come with jetpacks. Much like the Pouncers from our Terminids Ultimate Guide video, which I recommend you check out, these enemies force you to adjust your vertical sight lines, which pulls you away from where a majority of the action is happening. Unlike the Pouncers, however, Assault Raiders have an additional death rattle effect. Once killed, their jetpack explodes, and if you're anywhere close to it, you're most likely looking at instant death. Believe me when I say these things are nasty, but you can opt to shoot their legs out, which stops all forward momentum, which I found to be a good trick. Because they can close distance so quickly and their explosions are lethal, if you're ever in a pinch, try diving backwards while unloading on them. This will ensure you have enough distance to dispose of them and not get caught in that explosion. Either way, these guys are also a 3 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. While it technically looks the same, the Commissar deserves some special attention, as this unit is easily one of the most troublesome in the entire Automaton army. At face value, they're not that deadly, wielding a laser pistol in one hand and a melee weapon in the other. They don't move particularly fast and don't pose that much of a direct threat, but there's a catch. First, the Commissar has the ability to throw grenades. These can be yeeted back by the player, which is a great way to clear out some other enemies, but only if you spot it before it explodes. If you don't, well, boom goes the dynamite. Its second ability is a flare, and as you no doubt know at this point, that calls in a bot drop. Early on, this isn't a huge deal, but once you get into the higher difficulties, a single flare can call in three or four dropships, which pretty much turn the next five minutes into a fight for total survival. Commissars should always be the number one priority when fighting automatons, no questions asked, because what they can call in is far worse than any single enemy on this list. For deadliness, I'd give the Commissar a 2 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index, but in reality, it gets the dreaded Skull out of 10 because in my opinion, it's the single most deadly enemy in the entire army. As just discussed, bot drops are going to get called in, there's no question about that. And in case you haven't seen our Wish I Knew Sooner Tips and Tricks video, another one I recommend you check out, I wanted to make sure you knew how to take these things right out of the sky. The best way to do this is with the Recoilless Rifle, which isn't something a lot of players are running at this point because it's a support weapon and takes up a backpack slot. However, with one or two shots to the engines, a Recoilless can take out a dropship. 
rendering all enemies aboard terminated. Think about that for a second. One or two rockets and you negate an entire wave of enemies. That is unrivaled democracy at its finest. Additionally, the autocannon sentry can also take out a bot drop in a couple of shots, so when defending at any point, a couple of these sentries can prove invaluable. I should also point out that if you can find and activate the SAM site secondary objective that you can find on some automaton maps, it'll actively shoot down bot drops with its limited ammunition, which gives you that added layer of relief during a mission for a brief time. Looking like ATRTs from Star Wars, the Scout Striders are the first real special unit in the Automaton army. Perched atop a walker, the trooper inside is protected by armor in the front and partially on the sides. Constantly moving towards its target, the Strider will move quickly to close any gaps while constantly firing off rounds from its twin laser cannons. These enemies are no joke offensively, but are relatively easy to kill, thankfully. A couple different ways you can go about this. If you're accurate, you can shoot them from the front as there is just a sliver of their exposed trooper head that you can take advantage of. An auto cannon shot or a railgun to any part of the Strider's body will also topple them over. You could also throw a grenade, which almost always knocks the trooper off the walker. You might have to kill the trooper separately, but the walker is out of the picture. Finally, you could choose to flank the enemy. Notice who the walker is aggroed to and then communicate with your team so someone can rush around the side to get a clean shot. A few bullets later and the Strider is no more. We give these enemies a 4 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. All right, let's talk about Devastators. There are three we need to talk about and each brings some immensely different firepower to a fight. The standard Devastator is easily the weakest. Equipped with dual laser rifles, this enemy will slowly move towards the player and while accurate, it's relatively easy to avoid taking direct damage by finding cover as you would against any automaton enemy. They are armored, which makes taking them out a bit challenging, but there are two strategies here. If you're using a highly accurate weapon, you can go for the head. That's a weak spot, but you can also shoot the area between the torso and the legs, which will cleave the Devastator in half. If you're using something like the 225 Breaker, as most players currently do, this is the best way to deal with these enemies. Additionally, a well-placed railgun shot or two will render these enemies useless. The standard Devastator gets a 3 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. The next variation, the Heavy Devastator, is truly where things start to get more challenging. This variation of the foe carries a massive shield in one arm, protecting it from nearly all attacks from the front, and the other arm, it's carrying a laser rifle that sends out a burst of projectiles at a rapid pace. One of these is deadly, but you'll often have to confront two or three, and that's in conjunction with other enemies pressing the attack. Heavy Devastators are ruthless and are far from easy to take down. A couple choices are to use a weapon like a railgun or an autocannon and shoot at the head exposed just behind the shield. Shooting the shield with the railgun will also stagger the Heavy Devastator, opening their front side to you or your teammates for a brief period of time. You can also shoot off the arm, which will stop it from shooting. The other option is to use stratagems and grenades, which is a fine solution, but are better reserved for other, more challenging enemies. Finally, a squad mate can try and flank the enemy and shoot it out at the weak point between the torso and legs that we mentioned before. A few different options, all of which are tricky to execute under pressure. In my opinion, the Heavy Devastator gets a 5 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. There's one more variation still, and that's the Rocket Devastator. This variation sits far in the backfield and fires a rocket barrage at players that will almost always catch you by surprise. While not super accurate, it's the barrage effect of four different rockets flying your direction that make them one of the most anxiety-inducing enemies in the Automaton army, especially when there is a whole cluster of them. There's not much more to their deadliness. They'll just constantly assault you with rockets until you're dead or they're taken care of. You can choose to shoot the rocket pods off their shoulders, which makes them inoperable, but why waste bullets putting a band-aid on a problem when you can just shoot the enemy in the head or a weak point connecting the torso and legs and take them out for good? The real challenge with these enemies is that they are constantly waiting for you to peek. They are quite literally always watching, and if you get the timing wrong, just one rocket can, and most likely will, kill you. Rocket Devastators are as deadly as it gets and can often catch you by complete surprise within a whole horde of bots, which is why they get a well-deserved 9 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. Similar to the Devastator, the Berserker is a medium-sized enemy that comes equipped with two chainsaw-like melee weapons. These enemies move quickly and will pursue Helldivers at all costs, which can be a real pain when a dropship dumps four or five of them at your feet. 
If they reach you, things get dicey quick, but if you manage to keep them at a distance, they are manageable. Grenades work great, as they usually end up bunching up as they get caught on small pieces of terrain or other robots, but the real secret is what we've talked about before, shooting either the head or the area between the torso and the legs. A teammate with an autocannon or even the beginner machine gun can really prove invaluable for keeping these enemies from swarming you. They are hardy and take quite a few hits to completely kill, but if you can manage the pressure, Devastators really aren't that scary. We give them a 4 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. As we continue to climb the automaton food chain, we arrive at the Hulks, massive armored enemies that are, in my opinion, the most deadly in the robot army. There are two variations to discuss here, and they're far from equal. However, killing them is the same across the board, so we'll tackle that first. Truthfully, Hulks are most easily killed with a well-placed railgun shot to the eye. In our opinion, this is the most efficient way to take them out, but I realize not everyone wants to use a railgun. If you're opting for something like the Recoilless or the Autocannon, you'll want to swing around the back of the Hulk, which does require some coordination with your team. There, you'll see a glowing orange vent, and this is the enemy's weak spot. You can attack this with any weapon, but heavy weapons do the job much better. Of course, you can also use stratagems like an orbital laser or orbital rail cannon strike, which will almost always one-shot these enemies. But other stratagems like the Mortar Sentry, EMS Mortar Sentry, and various Eagle airstrikes can also get the job done. So, to break this down, first up we have the Hulk Bruiser. These have two massive laser rifles, one on each arm, and for the most part don't pose much more of a threat than the standard Devastator we talked about before. Yes, the lasers are bigger and they have a slight AoE component, but so long as you have a wall or a rock between you and the Hulk Bruiser, you'll be okay. These get a 6 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. The final variation, the Hulk Scorcher, is by far the biggest pain in the ass. These melee Hulks will tirelessly pursue Helldivers and come equipped with a flamethrower that has way more range than you'd imagine. Amongst a sea of automatons, it's easy to lose track of these enemies, and just those few seconds when your attention is split is enough time for them to close the gap, and once they do that, it's game over. Alone, most players and teams can handle a Hulk Scorcher, but in the heat of battle, when the pressure is on, taking these out is a real challenge. They should be a priority whenever possible, and there's no shame in using whatever you can to take them out. In fact, all Hulks should be dealt with using whatever tools you have, so call in those stratagems and make sure you take them out of the fight as soon as possible. Scorchers receive an 8 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. The final two enemies on our list today are Automaton Tanks, and they come in two varieties. First is the Annihilator variation, which features a small front-facing machine gun turret, which can really only fire in a narrow frontal cone in front of the tank. However, the real damage comes from the massive turret atop the tank, which, as you might have guessed, fires a giant laser at its target, dealing massive damage in an AoE. The key here is to get up close to the tank because the turret, while deadly, is slow and can't target players directly in the vicinity of the vehicle. On the back side of the turret is the tank's heat vents, which, as we talked about with the Hulks, is the weak spot. Same rules apply as before, recoilless or autocannon to the vents will take the tank out quickly, but we prefer a few extra shots from the railgun, which can destroy a tank from a distance thanks to its full armor penetration. While big and imposing, once you know how to handle the Annihilator, it's not all that scary, but it can absolutely lock down an area if left unchecked, which is why it gets an 8 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. If you're curious to see our favorite endgame setup featuring the railgun, then I recommend you check out our endgame build guide, already up on the channel. It's a variation on the current meta, a loadout that we think works well solo or in a team setup, and much more flexible than the lone wolf kit that almost everyone is running on the higher end of the game's difficulty. The other tank, the Shredder, resembles that of the Flak Panzer from World War II and is equipped with four massive laser turrets that can shoot out a ridiculous number of rounds in a short period of time. Unlike the Annihilator, the Shredder's weapons don't have the ability to destroy environments, and rarely does it target sentries. For those two reasons alone, it doesn't have quite the same edge as its counterpart. However, its turret is able to rotate much quicker, so getting the jump on these with a teammate, whether it be with a weak spot on the back or a barrage of railgun fire, is best to kill them quickly. The Shredder tank gets a 7 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. I wanted to also call out the cannon towers that are found around various automaton points of interest. Take the turret from the Annihilator tank, place it on the top of a massive building, and you've got yourself a laser cannon. 
These things suck, and if you engage them from far away, you best be able to kill them before they start firing giant lasers in your direction. These towers are most easily killed with, what else, the railgun. But you could also take them out with stratagems like the 500 kilogram bomb, orbital laser, and orbital rail cannon strike. The unfortunate truth is that while it does have a weak spot vent on the back of the turret, it's very hard to get it to turn away from your team because it requires someone to run halfway across the map to get the tower to turn. It's not an ideal situation, which is why shooting it a half dozen times with a railgun is a much safer strategy. Again, this is not something I want to rank, just like the dropship, because they're not an actual enemy, but they are an absolute pain to deal with. So there you have it, every enemy in the automaton army and how to defeat them the most effective way. Hopefully you found this video helpful, but if we missed something, don't be shy, leave us a comment down below and help us spread managed democracy to the rest of the community. My name is Kodiak and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.